The House of Kuru, Part 2, Chapter 11 Tuition Fees The Pandava Attempt The five brothers readied their armor and sharpened their blades. Arjuna ensured all his celestial weapons were charged and had the potency to be launched. They then made their way to the gates of the Panchala kingdom and blew their respective conches bearing the flag and seal of the Hastinapura empire. Drupada, underestimating his enemy, arrived with a slightly smaller yet still deadly retinue of soldiers and single horse chariots with a hundred or so elephants. Drupada approached the outside of the city walls and waited with his younger brother Satyaji. Aided by 500 chariots and 150 elephants and nearly a thousand foot soldiers, the king of Panchala looked like a majestic and invincible Devendra, king of the celestial beings. The four-horse chariot of Arjuna and the two-horse chariots of all the other brothers stood firm on the opposite side of the battlefield. In between was a no-man's land which created a void. Looks like the house of Kuru has come for yet another beating and opportunity for my tax coffers to grow with a little more tribute. Little children, if you run home now, I promise not to hurt you and only increase your tribute. So hurry along now, go on, sneered the haughty King Drupada, while his brother Satyajit bellowed in laughter. Arjuna once more blew his conch when Bhima followed. This only seemed to enrage the King of Panchala and reciprocated by blowing his conch and a formal declaration of war followed. I will crush you, you little miscreants, and teach you the true meaning of the bow. After imprisoning you, consider the tribute to Panchala now tripled, bellowed the king of Panchala, and he roared a lion's roar and launched the first arrow, which Arjuna stopped in midair with one of his. Bhima then roared just as loudly, causing fear and tension in the opposing army as he grabbed his mace and entered the no man's land howling like a wolf facing thousands of warriors while Arjuna the bowman readied his bow and sent a volley of arrows. King Drupada and Satyajit launched a combined attack but Arjuna faced Satyajit first and the twins ensured that the wheels of Arjuna were always protected while Arjuna launched a one-man war against the younger brother of Drupada, Satyaji, while Bhima faced Drupada himself. King Drupada sent a hundred foot soldiers to slaughter the son of the wind god, but with each swing of his mace, the powerful Bhima, the doer of terrific deeds, sent large swathes of men flying. Bhima, possessing the strength of 10,000 elephants, laid waste to each and every armored elephant. The battle between Satyajit and Arjuna was spectacular to behold. Launching arrow after arrow, Arjuna devastated Satyajit's entire army and broke Satyajit's bow, sending Satyajit fleeing for cover. Seeing his brother in duress, the king of Panchala diverted himself from Bhimasena and rushed to the boy born under the star of Falguna, Arjuna himself. Falguna wasted no time with Drupada and sent a shower of arrows so fast that no one could see where his hand began and his quiver of arrows ended. So light-handed was Arjuna that Drupada struggled immensely and fell off his elephant. As Bhima rushed towards him, one of his generals mounted on a four-horse chariot rushed and grabbed the King Drupada and drove away. Just in time for Satyajit once more engaged Palguna and once more the son of Indra 
looking no different to Wrath personified, launched arrow after arrow, utterly destroying the chariot of Satyaji and his charioteer, causing chaos in the ranks and all of Satyaji's soldiers and such Satyaji himself fled in terror on the light-handed nature of the son of Indra, Arjuna. Bhima Sena roared in the middle of the battle like a tiger sending shockwaves of fear amongst enemy ranks and once more he swept the massive mace and the sheer tonnage of weight exerted by his mates was enough to kill a thousand people and a hundred elephants killing hundreds of soldiers and dismantling hundreds of chariots a furious and ferocious Drupada arrived once more on a two-horse chariot and commenced a spectacular battle with Arjuna and began to use the deadly celestial weapons. He brought forth the Agneastra, which Arjuna quickly countered with the Varunastra, and the duel between the two titans raged with such valor that even Bhima and the surrounding warriors stopped their fighting to see a spectacular battle with the son of Indra and the emperor of Panchala. Time and time again, Drupada kept trying to cut the axle of Arjuna's chariot, but either Sahadeva or Nakula would ensure that the arrow did not touch Arjuna's chariot, while Arjuna focused all his attention on either the son of Prushata or his supporting soldiers. Yuri turned to rage with Drupada going all out launching celestial weapons one after the other and Arjuna sporting a wrath stricken face countered all of them with ease and within moments one could see that the potency of the king of Panchala was weaning. His weapons were almost exhausted and Arjuna was gaining the upper hand. Arjuna not holding back gave the devastating blow to Drupada by launching the deadly Aindrastra, the celestial weapon of Indra himself. The Aindrastra covered Drupada's chariots in arrows and he was no longer able to defend himself. Volleys of arrows flooded all his men and horses and finally with the launch of Nagastra, Arjuna bound the haughty king Bhimasena pounced on his chariot. Dragging him by the hair, Bhimasena then tied his arms around the chariot of the king of Panchala, who, out of severe exhaustion, had fainted. With the capture of the king, Arjuna gave a loud roar and Bhima blew his conch. The entire army of Panchala fled in every direction and Satyajit was no longer able to command the men while the sons of Pandu valiantly dragged the haughty king by the arms all the way back to Hastinapura. Guru Drona was waiting outside the city gates of Hastinapura along with his wife Kripi and son Ashwatthama. Dragging the king of Panchala by the hand, Arjuna, the mighty bowman, threw him onto the feet of his perceptor. Guru Drona embraced Arjuna and conferred the title Vibhatsu. Dearest student, from the day I met you, the day you promised me to do anything to pay tuition, I knew intuitively that you alone will bring me my vengeance. Your name will now be Vibhatsu, which means one who fights with spectacular effort on the battlefield, said Guru Drona and Arjuna prostrated. Dear Guru Drona, the entire kingdom of Panchala is now all yours, along with its forts and palaces. Everything belongs to you. This is the tuition fees, my Guru, said Vibhatsu with pride. Consider all debts paid in full, said Guru Drona, and then he looked at his nemesis and smiled as Drupada held a downcast look, unable to look Guru Drona in the eye. Guru Drona gently lifted him up with both his hands and embraced him. Ah, this was the embrace I missed before, 
Tell me, friend, now that I possess your kingdom, do you consider me an equal now? Will you embrace me like your blood brother? Do not fear inequality. I will give you half of the kingdom my student Arjuna has won for me. That way, we are equals. You see, my friend, that is the nature of a Brahmana, a member of the priestly class. We forgive and we forget, said the weapons master, to which the former king of Panchala embraced the weapons master. You have treated me with dignity upon defeat. You truly are my blood brother. I am fortunate to have you as my friend, said Drupada, as the two began to make amends. Guru Drona then approached Vidura and Bhishma. Tell the king of Hastinapura, King Dhritarashtra, that I am willing to graduate the students of the Kuru house. He will need to build a large stadium, one that can house at least half the empire. My protege, Vibatsu, the subduer of Panchala, the wielder of the Brahmastra, will display his talents as would the sons of the King Dhritarashtra and all students who studied under me, instructed Guru Drona. To Vidura and Vidura happily obliged. My, my, my great-grandfather and great-grand-uncle single-handedly defeated the walled, fortified city of Panchala? That is unbelievable, said Janamejaya. You must believe it, my king. They were truly endowed with divine prowess, said Vaishampayana. Tell me, dear Guru, what of the other son of Kunti, the one with the portion of Savitar himself? What became of him? I am eager to know, said Janamejaya. And then Vaishampayana started the tale of Vaikartana Karna.